This is an attempt to answer the question of which is the best route planner for RGT magic modes. The route planners work by looking up elevation against a digital elevation map. So you plot a point, it will look up the elevation associated with that point. It gets the elevation from the maps that have been generated from various sources, such as the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, SRTM, and this was released with about 90 metres resolution and has since been reanalyzed so that it is similar to the other map here, Aster, which has a resolution of about 30 metres in addition. There's also the USGS survey. So let's talk about the 30 metre resolution. Nyquist theorem dictates that you need to sample something twice its frequency to accurately de depict any changes, twice the frequency of changes. So here I'm talking about ultrasound here in a different presentation, but um, if we're sampling twice every wavelength or twice uh, double the frequency, you're going to potentially accurately depict that, that wave. Whereas if you're sampling only once or fewer times per wavelength, then you're not going to accurately depict the changes. And if we're talking of elevation here, I could sample once here, here and here, and we could just get a flat line. There's more to it. If we look here at Ditchling Beacon, and we look at this particular corner, here we're on the road, you've got a drop off down next to you, and a quite a steep rise immediately next to you. Now this 30 meters, it isn't in the line of your road, it's 30 meters across and 30 meters up and down. So your point that could be plotted could be could have an ele elevation derived from any point within this tile. This has an impact in the route planning accuracy and I'm going straight to, to ride with GPS here and I've plotted the, the elevation profile of Ditchling Beacon and you can see these humps. I certainly don't remember these humps when I was riding it and I can't see these humps on Google Street View even at the corners. If we look at Strava, this is the Strava elevation data, it doesn't suffer from these humps. And this is, uh, these are the humps again using best available source from GPS Visualizer. So a combination of ASTAR, SRTM uh, and so on and so on. And this was a ride actually ridden uh, that I, I rode with my um, GPS watch and there's a fixed elevation error but you can see that the ride more closely matches what you can see and what I felt at the time. Certainly we didn't feel these and I think these are down to the steep sides of the, the hill. We see this elsewhere as well. If I look at the recent ride that I've done where we've looked at uh, the last laps of the Tour de France. Here, here are the data that I've got. This is the elevation profile uh, across the laps. We can see going up the Champs d'Elysees, up to the Arc de Triomphe and down, and then coming across underneath the, uh, I forget the name of the gardens, uh, there's a little dip here. Now these data were recorded on a Garmin 830, which is a barometric altimeter in it. And just to check, let's look at all the other riders' um, data. This, this has been processed. This was my actual file that I used for RGT Magic Roads. But here's, uh, here's the original. Uh, you can see it's different uh, and there's an offset as the, um, the altimeter corrects. But, um, Here's a uh, SRM PC8, so that's different to the Garmin. We can see this little dip here again. We can see going up to the Arc de Triomphe and going down. Uh, 
and here is a Sigma Rox 12. Notice the similarities. Each one is is recording the elevation according to uh, the barometric altimeter in the device. And of course, there may be an offset uh, because none of these devices are perfect, but they're all responding relative to their original uh, elevation. Here again, exactly the same picture. This is a Wahoo element bolt. And again, uh, oh, I don't think I have another Wahoo. Now here is the Strava data and here is SRTM. So you can see the SRTM is very, very basic. You can see that the number of points and the resolution is going to be very poor. And here is best available source using GPS visualizer uh, and it's chosen best available source from SRTM, Asta, and whatever else it has available, Google as well. And again, you can see the resolution is remarkably poor. Now this is Strava. So that looks entirely different to the SRTM and the uh, best available SRTM, Asta, etc. Now, if we take Strava, it's got elements of this and also elements of the base map. So if we see this hump here and this hump here. So what Strava has done, have done is they've taken the uh, Aster and SRTM base map and they use user data to refine it. And it's an ongoing process. They're still refining the um, elevation map. And so along the rides that you do, along the routes that you can plot, Strava is going to be much more accurate as a route planner than sites that don't do this. And here we've got Ditchling Beacon, SRTM and Strava and, um, sorry, beg your pardon, this is Ride with GPS. This is Strava and this is my ride. And I should have it elsewhere, the SRTM best of all best available. In fact, I don't, I don't need to have it. I can tell you that this is exactly the same as Ride with GPS. I've looked at Komoot as well and um, they've got a nice bit explaining a little bit about their elevation altitude data but it doesn't go into as much detail as the Strava go into it in terms of how they obtained that data and here the elevation profile looks reasonable you don't get the humps but I'm not really sure what a 23% um, 20, gradient is doing in there I didn't um, I'm saving this for another time so I actually haven't downloaded the, the map for, for Komoot to, to analyse this. So you'll have to make up your own minds as to how accurate that is. Um, if we go to Garmin, we can see these little humps. They've just taken the basic Aster SRTM data. So there's nothing, no further processing. And why is this further processing correct? Well, neither Garmin nor Strava are offering their base maps as an alternative to barometric altimeters. These are still currently the gold standard in uh, sports to establish your elevation uh, across the ride. So at the moment, the best result you're going to get is from downloading a, a, a file performed on a decent uh, device and I've shown this before how to do it. Um, I've used um, GPX um, download tool. What I do is I, I go to Segment Explore, I find one and think, well, that's going to be the Tour de France, isn't it? Click on it and view details. And oops, there we are, that's Egan for now. Uh, click on it and look, here we are, July 28th, 2019, definitely some Tour de France. Uh, data from there and then you can of course download these data using the Firefox plugin that I've previously described um, GPX downloader for, uh, for, for Strava um, here it comes and I can download the GPX if you're a Strava premium member you can download the GPX here but uh, this Firefox plugin will just download the GPX there. 
So that will give you the best if you can find a, a decent file. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that, um, and I've covered some of it before. Um, the next best, I would strongly recommend Strava Route Planner because we know that they um, they do use barometric data to refine the base maps and anything else you've got to be careful that you're not really using very basic data straight from SRTM or from ASTA. In terms of plotting routes, if you search for um, import GPX Strava route planner, you'll get to a, a little bit extra on the route planner where you can actually import a GPX. And here I've imported the average of Egan Bernal's eight laps around here. And it's made a route for me, but it hasn't made a particularly great route. Uh, and you'll find that some sites such as Komoot and Strava offer popularity route planning. Uh, same with Garmin as well. So you can choose popularity routing and that will cause your track to go along popular routes. Now you may find you'll need to turn these off at points and just plot it manually. Sadly with Strava, if you turn off popularity routing, you lose the benefit of their a detailed base map and you fall back to less detailed elevation base maps. So like I say the best you can do is download a high quality GPX file and you have much more freedom to define your route and gain elevation data. The next best I would say if you're doing very simple rides on roads that are very commonly ridden, for example, Ditchling Beacon, Strava is going to give you excellent results. And maybe someone else could look into um, someone else who has a subscription to Komoot or who's unlocked the data can really investigate whether we're, we're really seeing 21% gradients on Ditchling Beacon, which really isn't correct. Um, so as it stands, I'd probably steer away from the sites that have very basic elevation base maps. I'd stick to Strava, possibly Komoot, um, and otherwise I'd use a, a ride from, uh, that you've performed or from a, a decent device. I'll have to do another video on how exactly I made my um, uh, Tour de France lap. Essentially I used um, a little R script that averaged all these routes and uh, then I averaged the elevation in, um, here's the average route here, and then I averaged the elevation in uh, Excel and uh, made a few adjustments uh, to get this final route. So more on that later.